as many of you probably know, um, the United States uh, Biden administration tried to adopt a resolution that would uh, call for Israel to immediately uh, stop their invasion of Gaza and particularly the Rafa uh, city, which Israel says is imminent and could take place as I'm doing this uh, video. But thankfully, Russia and China vetoed the resolution so that it would not be 100% against Israel. But the fact that the United States would bring this resolution to the, to the floor of the UN Security Council uh, is very troubling. Both the United States and Canada have slowed down any military weapons or bombs, and I've heard Iron Dome missiles as well. But they've slowed them down to a crawl so that uh, this would hamper or at least delay Israel's imminent invasion of uh, Rafa. Now that's basically where many of the last remaining Hamas fighters and uh, commanders are located. And you know the funny thing is, is that they're not only a threat to Israel, but also to the United States because we have a wide open border. And it wasn't too long ago that we captured a Hezbollah terrorist fighter who had said he was coming to the country for a specific reason to create a bomb and then blow up a high-value high, high target. I believe it was in New York. So I'm not so sure why that the United States is so bent on preserving any, you know, any remnant of Hamas so that can still go forward with a two-state solution without Hamas. In fact, it sounds like if, if in fact, they were to go forward, it would be better for everyone if Hamas was not in the, involved in the picture. But getting back to uh, this attack that's about to take place, uh, the United States has sent their top foreign uh, diplomat, Secretary Blinken, to meet with Israeli leaders to put a little last-minute pressure on Israel and um, to also do a little threatening. It says right here in this article from the Times of Israel that Blinken warns major Rafa op risk global isolation, long-term security harm for Israel. And you know, this is what the world has been waiting for. And if I were guessing, I would say that Israel is determined to start this attack, but at the same time, it wouldn't shock me a bit if, in fact, they gave uh, the United States and others who are in these uh, peace talks or ceasefire talks, I think it's going to turn into a, a peace talk before it's all said and done. But the question is whether it will be a peace talk on this side of the Rafa Ops or on the other side after Israel has completed their mission in the region. But, you know, that's the big question. Is the peace agreement that is talked about in the Bible that will last seven years, will it be brought about to prevent this op or will it be after the op and to attempt to try to bring together the two-state solution and then as a major incentive to agree to a two-state solution, the uh, moderate world will agree to normalize relations with Israel. Because this is what we need to be thinking about here in Bible prophecy. How are we going to get to this seven-year agreement and what are going to be the, uh, the terms? Because that's basically the gateway to the tribulation period. And yeah, I do believe we're that close. But something is going to have to bring about a seven-year term. I don't know what it's going to be. Will it be a seven-year uh, period to uh, create this uh, two-state solution? Will it be seven years to give Hamas a chance to rehabilitate itself and become a, a real governing body? Will it be seven years to try to rebuild Gaza? But as I said, one thing's for sure, it's going to have to be something that requires seven years because I, there's, you know, usually a peace plan does not have a time limit on it. But if I were going to guess, I would have to say that at some point in time, it's going to be seven years to get everything changed over you know, from Israel's hands to the Palestinian state hands, meaning Israel may have seven years to gradually get out of Gaza, relinquish parts of the West Bank, and at the end of the seven years, then that would be the normalization of the modern Arab world, and they may even throw in the temple, but I have a hard time believing that's going to be the case. I think what you're looking at is going to be this right here. I think you're going to see, of course, the rapture of the church takes place first. Those who are left behind will then be ushered into the tribulation period, and that will be started, of course, with a peace agreement for which the Antichrist will be involved, along with many and Israel. At some point, just before the midway point, I believe that war will break out. That war may very well be when the Gog and Magog war begins. 
but it will also incorporate what takes place in Revelation chapter 6 where one quarter of the world's population is killed. But when it's all said and done, I believe that the Antichrist will be victorious. And you know what? In that victory, Israel will be a part of it. I think at that time that Israel will then be given full reign over the the, uh, Temple Mount. And in doing so, Israel will rebuild their temple. And once it is rebuilt, I don't know how many and how long it will be before they finally get it completed. But at some point in time, the Bible says that uh, the Antichrist would stop the sacrifices and declare himself to be God. So I believe that it's beginning to look like that the Antichrist will take Israel under its wings as part of the the major victory that takes place for which the Antichrist will become the world leader and will become the, the, the world ruler. He will grant Israel the opportunity to rebuild their temple, but at the same time planning to desecrate the temple and to declare himself to be God. You know, speaking of uh, the Gog and Magog war, Mr. Putin is now openly planning for war against NATO, according to this uh, this, uh, article coming out of the Telegraph. Now, of course, that could be just propaganda on his part, but uh, who's to say if this isn't true? There's definitely rumors that China is about ready to attack uh, Taiwan. In fact, the United States has got troops on their border right now in preparation for this possible conquest of Taiwan. In fact, according to intelligence, they believe it's likely that they'll probably attack by the year 2027. So it's not that many years away before there could be a major war that could take place and that may be that may very much very well be a part of what goes on uh, during the Revelation 6 war that will take place in uh, the beginning parts of the tribulation period. But this is where I believe we're heading. So I definitely keep an eye on what's going on. If I were you, I would get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Go down to the uh, description section of this video and get your copies of uh, this book. And if you can, get multiple copies. Give them out to your friends and loved ones. Because if you know if they're going to be here, they're going to need it. And I'd also uh, get on my free Gitter account. If you want to get articles updated on videos that I do and other commentary that I make sometimes, This is the perfect uh, place to be when this stuff does come out. In other words, if you want to keep up on Bible prophecy the way it should be kept up, without the conspiracy theories such as what uh, is is coming up here in a couple weeks, which is the April solar eclipse, that has nothing to do with prophecy, but uh, many in the world are trying to say it is, but I can tell you right now, it has nothing to do with it. And we try to keep you straight on things like that so you don't get sidetracked. And also, if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Do not put that off. You know, you're going to regret it if, in fact, you do have you do end up going through the tribulation period because this is going to be one of the most horrible times the world's ever known. So I'd accept the Lord as Savior as soon as possible. Don't put that off. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.